Well, good morning. Um, I'm, I'm not going to be talking much about streetcars here. The concentration is going to be on basically public transportation in the Lake Minnetonka area. Uh, that's its really own subject. I can come out at another time and do one just straight on the streetcar system. But there's a, there's a, Lake Minnetonka, as you well know, is, uh, is, is a big topic. Uh, what's up here on the board, how many of you have seen this graphic before? I'm curious. Okay. Um, the the streetcar boats, which the streetcar company referred to as express boats, uh, uh, came on the lake in 1906. And uh, the streetcar company did a lot of promoting of its operations on the lake. And this was the graphic from the, they had a, a very nice folder, fold out folder on Lake Minnetonka. And uh, this was published in about 1907, 1908. Uh, and I know the, uh, the Museum of Lake Minnetonka, the folks who do the Minnehaha have used this a lot. But we're gonna go back a little bit earlier. Um, I don't know if you've seen this photo or not. Uh, in 1867, the St. Paul and Pacific Railroad, which was the predecessor to the Great Northern, uh, built out here. And uh, this is uh, the dock at Wyzata in 1867. Uh, this little boat is called the Governor Ramsey. And uh, it ran on Lake Minnetonka. It was the first steamboat on Lake Minnetonka. And it actually, because this was before the Graves Bay Dam, it, it ran on Minnetonka and then ran down Minnehaha Creek to Minnetonka Mills, which was the, the only dam, or, or rather the farthest up dam on the creek at that time. And so uh, the stagecoach would come out to Minnetonka Mills and then you could take a steamboat up to Lake Minnetonka. And then finally the, uh, the St. Paul and Pacific came in in 1867. So this is how railroad and steamboat operation began on the lake. And things were kind of quiet for, oh, about 15 years, about, oh, 13 years or so. And then Lake Minnetonka became this national tourist destination starting in about 1880. And there was this enormous construction boom on the lake. Um, the big hotels went up. James J. Hill built the Lafayette Hotel. And you know, there were a whole series of others that were built. And suddenly, um, you needed transportation to the lake. And let's see if I've got the right picture here. And okay, here we go. And um, four railroads built to the lake. Now the very first one, of course, was the Great Northern to Wyzata. And in 1881, it was extended down to the Hotel Lafayette, and it was extended because of the Hotel Lafayette. That was James J. Hill. By now, it was the St. Paul Pacific and St. Paul, Minneapolis and Manitoba. And then in a few years, uh, he would rename it the Great Northern, but it was James J. Hill's operation. So that was 1881 that you had the extension to the Lafayette Hotel. Simultaneously in 1881, the Minneapolis and St. Louis came out from Hopkins to Deep Haven and then down to Excelsior and built a branch line to Tonka Bay. And they created, they put in the Lake, uh, Lake Park Hotel. I always get it confused. It was originally, uh, the, the, I think it was originally the Lake Park and it became the Tonka Bay Hotel or it was the other way around. Um, then a year later, that was 1881, and then a year later, a little railroad called the Minneapolis, Lindale, and Minnetonka built out from Lake Harriet. Now this was a little bit unusual. All these other railroads were what you call standard gauge, which is so railroads as you know it today, four foot eight and a half between the rails. The Minneapolis, Lindale, and Minnetonka, which was nicknamed the Motor Line, uh, was a, had actually started as a steam-powered streetcar in Minneapolis and it was narrow gauge, it was only three feet between the rails. There was kind of a, a, a fad in railroading in the late 1800s of narrow gauge because they were cheaper to build. And so this little railroad had built out, had built through downtown Minneapolis in the street on Marquette Avenue, and then went out Nicollet Avenue to 31st Street and over 31st to Lake Calhoun, and it had ended at Lake Harriet. And when the Lake Minnetonka boom went off, they decided that they wanted to get in on it. So in 1880, they had built in 1880 to Lake Harriet. In 1882, they built out through Hopkins, um, more or less along uh, the old Excelsior Boulevard to Excelsior and they ended right at the docks here. So that was the third railroad, now we got three. In 1887, the Milwaukee Road, which also had ran through Hopkins, sent a branch out to Deep Haven, and I'll show you another map in a little bit that has that on. This one doesn't yet. 
Uh, and then, by the way, the other uh, extension uh, early in 1885 was this little business from the Hotel Lafayette to almost where we're sitting now to the new Hotel Del Otero, which was very close to where we're at right now. That was an extension that was done. Now, the, the motor line in eight, only lasted out here from 1882 to 1886. They were by far the slowest train from Minneapolis out here. They took over an hour to get here. All the others got out here in about 40 minutes from downtown Minneapolis, so they were fairly fast. Um, and so in 1886, the Great Northern uh, purchased the Minneapolis, Lindale, and Minnetonka from Hopkins West. They built a spur off their main line, the one that goes through Excelsior. They built a spur off of that from St. Louis Park down into Hopkins, and then took over this right of way, uh, converted the tracks to standard gauge, and uh, served Excelsior, and then extended it down around the lake through Zumbra Heights to St. Bonifacius and out to Hutchinson. And uh, that lasted that way until about 1900. And I'll get to a later map and show you what happened then. But so you have, you have a lot of railroad history out there, which is how people could get to the lake to access the hotels, access the steamboats. And here are a couple of, here are a couple of, the, of the schedules. The top schedule is the Great Northern schedule. Well, you see a St. Paul, Minneapolis, and Manitoba, the predecessor. And you can see they came out of Minneapolis, and they had uh, one, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six trains a day uh, out to the hotel, out to the Hotel Lafayette and Spring Park, where we are today. The bottom one is the Minneapolis and St. Louis to Excelsior, and you can see it came out here through Minnetonka Mills, and um, out to the Lake Park Hotel five times a day. And that was kind of typical of, of the train schedules. Here's uh, one of the stations along the Great Northern at Minnetonka Beach, right about where you would think at Minnetonka Beach. And uh, this is a schedule from the 4th of July where there were fireworks displays out here at Minnetonka Beach. You see it says on the bottom. And so they ran direct special trains from both Minneapolis and St. Paul all the way out to the fireworks at Minnetonka Beach for the 4th of July. Although interestingly, it's on the 5th of July. And um, I think that's because you can see it's a Monday, the 5th of July, the 4th fell on the Sabbath, and perhaps they felt it wasn't right to celebrate it on the Sabbath, so they did it on the 5th. Uh, here, this is the cover of the timetable for the uh, Minneapolis and St. Louis, the one that came out through Hopkins, Excelsior, and Tonka Bay. And so you can see they had a whole separate schedule from St. Paul, in Minneapolis to Lake Minnetonka points. This is one of the Minneapolis and St. Louis's trains, and um, it's crossing uh, the end of Carson's Bay in Deep Haven. Um, you go out here today, this trestle is now the bike trail, because the Minneapolis and St. Louis right of way is the bike trail that comes out from Hopkins out to Excelsior now. This is the little motor line, the Minneapolis, Lindale, and Minnetonka, the narrow gauge at the Excelsior docks. And you see it's a little, uh, the, the narrow gauge trains were small, so it's this little bitty engine and cars, and it's right down on the Excelsior waterfront. So that was there from 1882 to 1886, and then they withdrew because they were not competitive. This is their schedule. And you can see that they're, they're running from Minneapolis to Lake Calhoun and to Lake Harriet, and then one, two, three, four, six trains a day out to Excelsior. Now this is the same spot we just looked at, at the Excelsior uh, uh, waterfront, but this is after 1886 when uh, the St. Paul, Minneapolis, and Manitoba, to become the Great Northern, took over the motor line. And the way you can tell is, see the end of this railroad card here? It's a full-size standard gauge railroad car. That's how you know that this is not the little, uh, and we got a couple of steamboats in town too. Of course, you see the, uh, the Bell of Minnetonka, and I'm gonna talk about the, st the steamboats here in just a minute. So then in 1887, the Milwaukee Road sent a branch line out to serve the Hotel St. Louis in Deep Haven. 
And um, that went out through um, just south of Grays Bay and through North Ohm, if you can picture that, and then curved down um, to the dock in Deephaven. And what you don't see is right out of the picture to the right is the Hotel St. Louis. So that was in 1887. So now here's the later map showing the railroads. The motor line is gone, and so you have the Minneapolis and St. Louis. You've got the, here's the Milwaukee Road coming over and down through North Home to the Hotel St. Louis. And then in 1900, remember the Great Northern had been running out the motor line right away and then down through Zumbra Heights to get to St. Bonifacius and get to Hutchinson. In 1900, they, took, they extended the, the Great Northern from the Hotel Del Otero, right here where we are. That's when the extension was done out through Mound to St. Bonifacius, and then they abandoned this line around the south side of the lake. So that line around the south side of the lake was only there from 1886 to 1900. There are little traces of the right-of-way. There's a park reserve kind of down in this area, and there's still some traces of the right-of-way there. But most people don't even know that it was ever there. So, that's about how it looked in 1900. Now we'll talk a little bit about the early steamboats. And uh, when Scott McGinnis comes out, he'll go into this in much greater detail. But I just kind of want to give you a picture of sort of how Lake Minnetonka transportation developed. And so in 1881, when you had the Hotel Lafayette built and a whole bunch of others built, um, you had W.D. Washburn, who brought in the city of St. Louis. And this was the first uh, big, really big boat on the lake, side paddle wheel steamer on the, on the model of a Mississippi River boat. 160 feet long, the first electrically lit boat um, in North America, apparently, I'm told. And its competition that was floated the same year was the Bell of Minnetonka, which was twice as long, 320 feet long or so, which James J. Hill put out. And Washburn felt that there was not enough market for these two boats to compete on the lake, and he begged Hill to go in and simply be a cooperator, but Hill, of course, there was a lot of ego involved. And so Hill put the Bell of Minnetonka out, sailing out of, uh, out of Lafayette. So, in what I think is one of the neatest things ever, the way it would happen, even though you could take a train to Excelsior on the Minneapolis and St. Louis from Minneapolis, for a, for a few years, uh, the big deal was that you would take the Great Northern out to Wyzata. And this, these are, this is the station at Wyzata and the Wyzata docks. And you can see there's big steamboats all lined up there waiting to receive the passengers. So the first morning train would come out uh, to Wyzata and the passengers would get on the boats. And the boats, a lot of the boats would disperse to other parts of the lake. But three of the big boats, the City of St. Louis, the Bell of Minnetonka, and the Lotus, which is another large boat but not as big as the others, would take off and race to Excelsior. <laughs> and I, I, by race, I mean, and, and, and so here you're actually seeing the start of the race. Now, this next picture is the end of the race, and this is one of the most amazing photos I have ever seen. You're at the Excelsior dock, the Lotus has won, but here comes the city of St. Louis and the Bell. Now take a close look at the bow waves and, uh, and the paddle. Uh, these, these guys have not started slowing down yet. Uh, they're about to hit the dock and they're still going neck and neck. And I think this is just remarkable. Now, after a couple of years, the boats came under common ownership Washburn and, um, and Hill sold their interest in them, and then they were run by a single company, and they, they lasted into the 1890s. And uh, the whole national tourism thing on Lake Minnetonka was kind of a bubble, and it lasted about 10 years or so, and by the mid-1890s, it had pretty much run its course. Of course, the Lafayette Hotel had burned down, a lot of the other hotels were, were gone, and so they went through kind of a quiet period on the lake uh, from about 1895 to about 1905. Now there was, of course, a lot of other um, steamboat action on the lake. There's um, a little 
pamphlet, a little booklet that was published in, the, I think, about the 1920s called A Record of Old Boats. And Scott McGinnis will get into more of that. But the, in the history of Lake Minnetonka, there were something like 97 steamboats. And the majority of them were these little ones, these little private launches that were either owned by a hotel or they were owned by individuals. And um, these things ran all over the lake, but it was, it was steam power was how you got around. There were a certain number of early gas motor launches as well. This is Minnetonka Beach right here. And then there were a handful of larger steamers, kind of mid-sized steamers, that would travel around the lake um, either on scheduled service or in charter service. And uh, the ACTI is, is, it was kind of a long-lived one. And as you can see, making uh, it, they would go and meet the trains. So they'd meet the trains at the Hotel St. Louis, which was the Milwaukee Road, at Excelsior, which is the Minneapolis and St. Louis, at Lake Park, also the Minneapolis and St. Louis, Minnetonka Beach and Spring Park was the Great Northern. And then they would go to these other places and distribute people around the lake. So they ran sort of a scheduled service. Now, a lot of what made it possible to really exploit the lake was uh, the dredging. And this is what, this, these are the original narrows, which were located south of what we think of as the narrows today. They were, I don't know, a quarter, third of a mile south of there. But as you can see, it wasn't much to run a steamboat through. And so here are the new narrows with, uh, I think that's the uh, city of St. Louis coming to go through the new narrows. And of course, the County Road 19 bridge did not exist back then, so there was actually a ferry boat, a manually pulled cable ferry boat that ran across the narrows, and that's how you would get from Excelsior up to here, where, where we're at. And then, of course, the dredging came along, and that's what really went and connected all the bays of Lake Minnetonka to one another. Dredging was a big, was a big activity, and that made a lot of difference. Now, this photo right here, I'm a little suspicious about the caption. You can see there's a dredge working. That's, I think, the Tonka, which was one of the larger steamboats. The caption that I have on this says that this is the channel up to Lost Lake and Mound. I'm a little skeptical of that, that it, that it might instead just be the Narrows. Um, I've never seen a photo in the Lost Lake. If you guys have one in your collection, I'd be curious to see it. Um, you do? Of what, with steamboats up and up and mound at all? I'm not sure. So, but uh, but that's what this thing purported to be was uh, the Lost Lake Channel. Here's another steamboat, uh, the Fanny L, that was making scheduled service, and you can see they have a detailed schedule where at 8:15 in the morning they start out in Excelsior and they head to Wyzata, and you can see all the docks that they're hitting along here. You know, Meadville, Fairview, Linwood, Somerville. Some of these are private docks, some of these are public docks. But there was a lot of places along the lake that they go. And, and so you see this guy had a schedule that went from 8.15 in the morning to 10 o'clock at night. And this was around 1900 as well, before the, before the streetcar express boats, but there was a scheduled service running on the lake. To the point of where, uh, these are, this is a commutation ticket. Uh, this wasn't all just for sightseeing. This was a, something called the Champion Steamship Line for 1903, and it's actually a multi-ride commuter ticket. Uh, apparently someone was going to work every day on the steamboat. Now, of course, passengers weren't the only thing carried uh, around the lake on the steamboats. You also had uh, delivery services. Uh, this is the delivery boat for Donaldson's department store. And what they would do is they would, uh, they would, if you ordered something from Donaldson's downtown, they'd put it on a train, bring it out to either Excelsior or Wyzata or, or Deep Haven, and then uh, the Donaldson's boat with the uniform attendant uh, would come by and pick it up and take it to your place on the lake, because, uh, you know, the roads really weren't good on the lake. Here's a little... There you go, there's the flyer for it. Those are all the places that you could go and get delivery from Donaldson's department store. Now, I really like this. This is Dayton's airboat package delivery service. 
and, and, um, and it says the Curtis Northwest Airplane Company's new uh, airboat, and it says they'll be going to, uh, doing uh, deliveries on Forest Lake, Ch Ch Chisago Lake, Moose Lake, et cetera, but it says at present it is on Lake Minnetonka near Wysata. So I, I haven't researched this to see to what extent you could have a boat fly in and deliver a package. This is kind of like Amazon and dropping a drone, you know, on your front step. Uh, but anyway, I thought this was kind of a fun sidelight of the steamboat era. Okay, so the lake, the big boom is over. It's 1905, and uh, the, a lot of the big hotels are gone. They're kind of in their waning years. And then Thomas Lowry, who owned the Twin City Rapid Transit uh, system, the streetcar company, decided that he wanted, he thought Lake Minnetonka was due to be developed as sort of a working person's resort. Now this is the map of the streetcar system as of 1909, and as you can see it was extensive. It covered all of Minneapolis, all of St. Paul, it went all the way out to White Bear Lake, to Stillwater, and down to Bayport, right on the St. Croix River. In the other direction, it came out in 1905, it had, it had ended at, La at Lake Harriet right here, and he extended it out to Hopkins with a little branch up into Hopkins, and then um, he, he bought the right-of-way that the Great Northern no longer needed uh, west of Hopkins, which was a, the old original motor line right-of-way, and he kind, of, he kind of straightened it out and ran that into Excelsior. They bought the Milwaukee Road branch and strung overhead wire on it to go to Deep Haven. Did, did that in 1905. And then in 1907, they bought the, uh, the Minneapolis and St. Louis's branch to the, to the Tonka Bay Hotel up the peninsula. And so that's what they did with the streetcars. Now, And at the time, electricity was still quite a novelty. And so, once again, they opened this up in 1905, put the second track in in 1906. So that makes this, uh, this is probably about a 1906 postcard. And because electricity was a novelty, starting at Lake, Cal at Lake Calhoun at 34th Street, they strung up these arc lights, which were powered off the overhead wire. And they put them in about every pole or two all the way out to uh, Lake Minnetonka and called it the Great White Way. Nobody had ever gone and lit up a railroad like that, at least not in the Twin Cities before. And they built about 40 of these streetcars. Now, Twin City Rapid Transit was the only streetcar company in the United States to build all of their own streetcars. And that's because Thomas Lowry decided that, by gosh, the stuff you could buy from commercial builders was not sufficiently up to handling Minnesota winters. And so he had his shop crews uh, design and starting in 1898, uh, start building their own streetcars. And um, for the line out to Lake Minnetonka, that line was designed so that once you got outside of the city limits of Minneapolis at France Avenue entering Edina, from there out to Excelsior was 60 mile an hour track. Well, the regular streetcars wouldn't go 60 miles an hour, they'd go about 45. And so he, uh, he went and built a group of about 40 of, of cars which looked the same except that they had these marker lights on the front and they had the, uh, a regular cow catcher on the front and they had bigger motors and taller gearing, and these things that go 60 miles an hour. And as you can see, uh, it says Excelsior on the, on the destination sign. And so they, would, uh, they were running half hourly frequency during the weekday out to Excelsior, hourly to Deep Haven, and uh, hourly beyond uh, Excelsior to Tonka Bay. But on Sunday, and remember this was a six day work week there, so Sunday was really the only day working people had off. On Sunday, they, they had up to 60 streetcars on the line coming out to Excelsior. Um, they were running basically uh, every, every five to 10 minutes all the way out here. People wanted to come out to the lake. Now, what do they want to come out to the lake to see? Let me see if I've got this lined up. Oh, and they also experimented with a double, oh, the double decker. This, by the way, was not a success, but they tried it. Uh, Here's an example of uh, what the right-of-way looked like going through the countryside. 
So then you come into Excelsior, and you're right down there on the lakefront, and this is the streetcar depot that they would get off in Excelsior. See, there's a, wa there's a walkway under the tracks there. This is a view of, um, this, you're looking towards the lake, and so after letting people off, some of the cars would continue into Excelsior, and others would just pull into this storage yard. And then beyond it is the uh, Excelsior dock station, which is where you'd board the steamboats. This was a late photo, by the way, taken in 1925 when they were starting to build Excelsior Amusement Park, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Right, but uh, like I said, that, that, that wasn't there until almost the end of, of the streetcars. So, the people would come in and they'd transfer to one of the express boats. Now, the express boats were designed by Royal Moore of the, of the Moore Boat Works, which became Minnetonka Boat Works in Wysada. But they were built by the streetcar company in their streetcar shops over at 31st and Nicollet in, uh, in Minneapolis. If you go over to 31st and Nicollet today, there's a Metro Transit bus garage. And the reason there's a bus garage there is that uh, the original, remember the motor line, the little narrow gauge line? They had built a railroad roundhouse at 31st and Nicollet. And the railroad roundhouse was replaced by the streetcar factory that built these boats and built the streetcars. And then in 1912, that was replaced by a regular streetcar barn, which became a bus garage in 1954, which was then replaced in 1990 by a current bus garage. And so if you're ever in 31st and Nicollet in South Minneapolis and say, Why, what is this bus garage doing here? The answer is it goes back to the motor line in 1886. So anyway, they built these boats, and you would get on at uh, the um, Excelsior Dock Station. By the way, that cupola that's up on the top, that housed the dispatcher for all the boats, as well as a grandiosely named uh, uh, official called the Commodore of the Fleet, because they actually had quite a fleet. Now, some of you may remember this building because after, the, after the, the streetcar boats quit in 1926 and they built Excelsior Amusement Park, this building became the Dodgem Car Ride. Remember that? So anyway, here you are at the Excelsior docks and there's two boats getting ready to leave. You got the, you got the Express for Wyzata on the left, for Zumber on the right. You can see there's little clocks here. This is going to leave at 15 after the hour. That's going to leave at 15 to the hour. These things were timed to meet trains. And if you move down, here's a, one of the streetcars. After you went past the Excelsior dock station, streetcars continued into downtown Excelsior. And uh, you might recognize this little ticket office, which is still there. Right out there, right at the Excelsior Dock at the foot of Water Street, and here's a streetcar coming around the corner. And then, of course, you have the, the, the casino and the Blue Line Cafe, which are long gone. And then here's Water Street. Um, this is about 1915 or so. I'm sure most of those buildings are still there, but the tracks went right down Water Street. You're looking towards the lake. That's the casino in the distance. Uh, this is a view along the Deep Haven line. The Deep Haven branch, all they did was electrify the old Milwaukee Road to a single track, not as fast. And then, of course, the big attraction, besides the express boats, where you could transfer to go to all points on the lake, um, was Big Island. And uh, Big Island was built in 1906, and the whole idea was to have a picnic ground and amusement park out a couple of miles out into the lake so that people could transfer from the streetcars. And this was the big attraction, other than uh, going to the express boats and, of course, distributing people all around the lake. So here you are, you're actually, they, they built three great big ferry boats, side paddle wheel ferry boats, just to shuttle the people back and forth from Excelsior to Big Island. And they ran every 30 minutes, except uh, uh, when on Sundays they'd run every 20 minutes. So you're actually up on the, on the deck of one of these things. It was pretty high up, and you're looking at the dock at Big Island. And of course, if you come in here today, this walkway is still there. The base of these things is still there. 
There's, there's a lot of ruins out there. If you haven't been out to see it, it's amazing how, uh, how much is still there. This was the water tower, which also had big electric light beacons on it. There was a roller coaster. And um, now here you are at the dock, looking at one of the ferry boats and uh, one of the excursion boats. They, they, they bought three or four of the pre-existing excursion boats that were running on the lake. And they used those just for tours of the lake. This is one of them. It's either the Plymouth or the, or the Mayflower. But this is one of the big uh, ferry boats that they built, and you can see it's letting off a load from Excelsior. Excelsior is way back here. This is um, a scene on, there, there's a, a number of postcards, color postcards of what it looked like on, uh, on Big Island. Here are, the, here are the ferry boats. Now, they built three of them, the Minneapolis, the St. Paul, and the Minnetonka were their names. And they ran them for one year and discovered that the freeboards were just too low. They were, they, uh, if there was any chop out on the lake, the, uh, it was coming over. And they also had trouble, I think, uh, maintaining, the, uh, maintaining the paddle wheels because of the covered. So you can see they're, they're in the streetcar colors of yellow. Well, uh, after one year, they took them off and rebuilt them completely. So this is, these are, this is well, this one it says Minnetonka, but they rebuilt them all three from this appearance to that appearance and painted them white. And the boats and the ferry boats and uh, Big Island Park only lasted from 1906 to 1911. They hauled huge numbers of people out there. The problem was that their season was Sundays only in the summer and it simply didn't provide enough cash flow for a year-round operation. They also had taken over the uh, Tonka Bay Hotel. And so in 1911, on the same day, the ferry boats were discontinued, the, uh, the hotel was discontinued, and Big Island was shut down. So what continued beyond that was the express boats still running to all points on the lake, and, um, and, and, the, the, and the streetcars still coming out. The steamboats lasted until 1926. Um, the, um, the streetcars lasted until 1932. The depression uh, killed them off. So then I was, uh, these were two of the pre-existing boats, the Excelsior and the, and the Puritan, which had been built in, oh, about 1900 or so, uh, before the streetcar company came out, they, they purchased these for tours all around the lake. And as you can see, it says right here, 40 mile excursion. And, uh, uh, and they're going all over the lake. And so that's what that was. So the, the, so the streetcar company at their height had something like four of these plus six of the express boats plus the three big island ferries. So what is that? Um, uh, four, six, they had, they had 13 boats on the lake. They needed a Commodore of the fleet. So now the express boats. Uh, when we found this picture, the, um, this falls in the category of what I call dinosaur photos, which is photos of something you never expected to see a photo of. And um, this is back at 31st and Nicollet at the streetcar shops. And this is one of the boats getting ready to be shipped on, on streetcar wheels out to Excelsior. And they haven't, um, I'm guessing that the engine is not in it yet, uh, and certainly the, the upper deck is not on it yet, just because they had to get it out of this building. And so I think what they did is they added those things when they went out, but uh, they, would have a work, they would have a work motor tie on to this and uh, pull the thing out on the streetcar line through southwest Minneapolis, past Lake Harriet and Hopkins, out to Excelsior. And so when they put them together, they looked like this. Now, initially, they did not have the canopy on the top. The canopy was added about 1910 or so. And the reason was, of course, if you didn't have a canopy, it would rain and you got rained on. Uh, and there was also a fair, these were coal fired. And so there was a fair amount of soot and all raining down on you, and the canopy would keep that off of you as well. But the boats, of course, there were six of them, and uh, they were named for local places. You know, the, uh, this is the Hopkins. There was Hopkins, Excelsior, Stillwater, Harriet. I'm, I'm forgetting uh, what, the, what the other one was. 
Hmm? Oh, Minnehaha, Minnehaha Chorus. And as you can see, they featured what was sort of a, um, uh, sort of a nautical fad, which was the torpedo stern. And the stern, the, um, if you've been on the Minnehaha, the stern, it basically leaves no wake. That was, that was the reason that they liked it. There was a problem with it, though. And the problem with it is that below the water, the hull is wider than it is up at the rub rail here. And so when they took the Minnehaha up off the bottom of the lake and fixed it up, they discovered that there was lots of, of damage, rubbing damage below the water line because the thing would keep hitting docks because it was wider below. And um, next to the docks, they had a boathouse and they had a little uh, tramway uh, to go and roll the boats out. Uh, I don't know if you can see very well, probably not, but this thing is resting on two dollies that are on rails. One of these dollies still exists at the Shorewood Yacht Club. And uh, you, you can see it out there. There's a little track that goes down into the lake. This isn't the location of Shorewood Yacht Club. This is just east of, uh, of the Excelsior Dock Station, but somebody salvaged one of those things. So the boats ran all over the lake. Here it is going through the Narrows, underneath the Narrows Bridge. And there were, <clears throat> well, I'll talk about that in a second. Okay, um, here we are approaching, this would be the Como, it looks like. We're on the Como and we're approaching where we are at today, the Hotel Del Otero. And you can see the dock is labeled Spring Park. This is the Spring Park dock. You'd walk right up to the hotel. There were a lot of small docks like this. This is at Spring Park here, where the boat would, actually this is probably the very same dock, um, where the boat would just pull up and people would, they'd line the gangway up next to it and people would come on out. Now, some of the docks were so shallow, especially private docks, they would be like this. They couldn't actually get the gangway up to the dock. And so what they did is they removed one of, the, one of the front windows and you'd climb out through the front window, which was probably a little less than dignified, but that's what they had to do. There were about 27 of these docks uh, that they served around the lake. Now, um, the, this is the dock at uh, Wildhurst, which is over on the west side of the Tonka Bay Peninsula. And uh, what they did initially, well, let me see if I can get to this thing here. Okay, here we go. Um, this is the route structure, but I have to explain, there were three very distinct eras in the routing of the streetcar boats. When they started out, you know, first there were four basic routes. There was Excelsior to Deep Haven and Wyzata. There was Excelsior to Minnetonka Beach. And then initially, there were two other routes that ran out of Excelsior. There was Excelsior through the Narrows to Spring Park, and there was Excelsior through the Narrows to Zumbra Heights. So the four basic routes always stayed the same, but how they were deployed uh, was different. So initially, they had everything running out of Excelsior. A couple years later, in 1907, uh, 1907 they built the, this little branch over to Wildhurst. And they went and split and put the upper lake routes out of the Wildhurst dock. And so the streetcar would, uh, would come in here and it would meet the Excelsior, it would meet the Wysata one at Excelsior, and it would meet the Minnetonka Beach one at Excelsior. Then the streetcar would continue to Wildhurst, and at Wildhurst, it would meet the Spring Park and the Zumber Heights boats. And um, what that did was it saved them one, one boat. They could, they could now run, they had six boats. And initially they were using all six all the time. When they went to this, they only needed five boats to do it. And so they had a spare. And they were basically running hourly service on these lines. There were, it took two boats to do hourly service to Wysata, one boat to do Minnetonka Beach, one boat to do Spring Park, one boat to do Zumber Heights. And there, um, there were some places like Crane Island uh, where they'd only stop about every second trip, but mostly they were doing hourly service. And once again, they were connecting with the trains. As a matter of fact, one of the features um, on this 
was that they would, they would connect with the train here and go to Deep Haven, and at Deep Haven, they would connect with the train there. The train, uh, the Deep Haven train came in at 40 minutes past the hour and left at 45 minutes past the hour, and in that five minute period, the boats, two, uh, the two boats, one from Wysada and one from Excelsior, would hit the dock at Deep Haven and make transfer connections. So anyway, that lasted until Big Island was eliminated and um, and until all those cruise boats, those, those early four steamboats that they had that would do big tours of the lake, those were gone in 1911. And in 1913, they went to what you see on the map here. What, now, I, I should explain, I'm, a, I'm an old Metro Transit route and schedule guy. And so I kind of get a kick out of a well-written schedule. And what they did here was the most amazing piece of schedule work I've ever seen. Now, I'll, I'll, I'm going to read what he did in just a minute, but let me explain how it worked. Because they no longer had the tour boats on the lake, they decided to schedule them so if you, if you caught an express boat, eventually you would get to every place on the lake. Before this, the express boats were restricted to their routes. The, the, one was just running back and forth to Wysada, one to Minnetonka Beach, one to Spring Park, one to Zumbra and they just went back and forth. Now they tied all the routes together so they would do Wysada, and then Minnetonka Beach, and then Spring Park, and then Zumbra, and then work their way back. And so if you simply stayed on the express boat and paid a little more money, you would also get a tour of the lake. So it was handling basic transportation while at the same time handling tourism on the lake. And I actually sat down with the schedule to figure out how this works. I gotta take off my glasses. Uh, to read this to you here, but here we go. So it says, okay, let's follow an express boat through a round trip. And, this, and, and these schedules are repeated hourly. Um, so it's 1015 at Excelsior, and a train from Minneapolis, they call their streetcars trains, a train from Minneapolis arrives at Excelsior at 1015, passengers immediately transfer to, in this case we'll say the Minnehaha, headed for Excelsior, headed for Wysada. So the train comes in at 10.15, two minutes later, the boat leaves for Wysada. The boat gets to Deep Haven at 10.42, meets the Deep Haven train, continues to Wysada, um, and, and, and sits in Wysada for 12 minutes. Okay, now we're coming back from Wysada to Deep Haven, pulls in at 11.40, connects with the Deep Haven tra train, um, and then, uh, and, and so the two boats are coming in from Wysada and Excelsior right at the same time. So, um, and so then the boat gets back to Excelsior four minutes before a train uh, from Tonka Bay stops on its way to Minneapolis. So there, you got one connection. And so, the, so the boat sits for 31 minutes. At 1245, another train from Minneapolis arrives. The passengers get off uh, onto the boat. And then two minutes later, they head for Minnetonka Beach. And so they go up to Minnetonka Beach. Um, and then from Minnetonka Beach, they, uh, they come down through the Narrows um, and go to uh, Spring Park. And then from Spring Park, they come to Wildhurst. Now remember, Wildhurst is this little dock here. And at Wildhurst, they connect with the train going both directions. And then they go to Zumbra. And then they come back to Wildhurst, connect to the train, and then they go back through the Narrows to Excelsior and connect with the train. Amazing. And in the course of this, this whole thing took about six and a half hours. They hit about 27 docks with scheduled connections of less than five minutes. I don't know how they did that. Um, I think what actually happened is I don't think they were stopping at all the docks. Some of the docks like Deep Haven and Zumbra Heights were scheduled stops. I think the others were flag stops. If there was somebody on the dock, they'd flag them down and pick them up. But otherwise, they'd just go on by. And at some of these lower use docks, they probably only would pick up somebody every third or fourth trip. But it was just an amazing system. Now, remember the Donaldson uh, delivery boat? Twin City Lines had their own version of this. They had what they called the baggage car, which was a street car that did not carry passengers. It was really a freight car, an electric powered freight car. And it ran out in the morning and in the afternoon from Minneapolis and St. Paul, out to Excelsior and out to Deep Haven. 
and, and, and it would deliver packages to the, to the express boats. And so that's how you got the, once the express boats were running, you would order something, anything, you know, um, or, or, or United States Postal Service package. And it would come out on the baggage car, be put on the express boat, and be delivered to you at your dock. And, uh, and this all happened because there really were not roads out here to speak of. By the way, the streetcars also handled pouch mail. That's how mail got out to the Excelsior and the Tonka Bay post offices, was that it came out on the streetcars. This, by the way, is at uh, Deep Haven, uh, and here's the streetcar coming in. And if you see the sign on the lower right, Express for Wyzata, that's the steamboat sign. And by the way, that building that's up top there, that's a house, but that was the original uh, Milwaukee Road Deep Haven Station. That house is still there. So now, as paved roads began to um, arrive out at the lake in the early 1920s, the business started to go away. And uh, the first line to be eliminated was, uh, uh, was the line from Excelsior to Wyzata. Because if you wanted to get from Minneapolis to Wyzata, the way you did it was just to take the Great Northern Railroad. Or starting in the 1920s, the Northland Greyhound bus. It was very indirect to take a train out to Excelsior and then take a, a, a boat up there. Um, and so the boats started running less and less and less, and they went from being profitable in the early, uh, around 1920 or so to becoming unprofitable. And this was a pattern that you saw all over the place. Automobile ownership took off after 1920, and local trains and streetcars and all that really felt uh, the impact of that. And so um, in 1925, they were getting very close to the end. And that's when you're looking at the Excelsior Dock Station, but that's when they sold the property for the Excelsior Amusement Park. There was about a one year overlap in 25, 26, when you had the, the park and you had this, uh, the, the Excelsior Dock Station going on at the same time. Sure, and so this is during that la kind of that last winter and you can see the boats are all kind of tied down there and um, everything. Uh, there you can see the dock station with the dome thing on the top uh, becoming part of the amusement park. This is actually, this shows you both the rail passengers and the boat passengers. And as you can see, and, and how profitable or not profitable the operation was. Um, you can see it goes into deficit when you get here, the numbers are in parentheses. And so they're turning a, a minor profit as late as 1924, but you can see the ridership on the boats uh, sink in, you know, it stays pretty steady here up till about 1918 and then it starts dropping off. They had a couple of good years, but it dropped way off. And so the last boats were um, eliminated in 1926 and then they, they went out and sunk them after that. And that's, uh, they were sunk off the northeast side of Big Island, and that's where they found the Minnehaha. And the others are down there. Uh, as a matter of fact, when they were restoring the Minnehaha, its propeller was broken, so they went down and got the prop off the Como. And, uh, and here's an aerial view of uh, the Excelsior Amusement Park in later days. This is, I think, about the 1960s or so. The dashed line is where the streetcar came in. And here you can see, so the streetcar came in, you had the streetcar station about here, and then here's the Excelsior Dock Station where they would get on the boats. So it got another 23 years later than the other boats. Uh, in 1940 or 41, they took the steam engine out of it and replaced it with a diesel or a gas engine of some sort and ran it there. But this is at the foot of Water Street. Once again, there's that, there's that, there's that little ticket thing that's still out there. And I think I may be at the end here. Yep, that's it, folks. <laughs>